Hi guys, Harbs and Arbs here. Today we're going to talk about the talkative skeleton in Baldur's Gate 3, and specifically who he might be working for. Before we get started, I'd just like to thank everyone that has recently subscribed. The channel is growing nicely, and it's great to see all of you sharing your own theories in the comments. We also have a Discord server where you can continue the conversation, and I have recently made a Patreon page that will help me to grow the channel even more. Both links are in the description below. Okay, let's go. So, we can come across the talkative skeleton pretty early on in the game. We find him in the chapel that Shadowheart is trying to get into, and I'm fairly certain that this skeleton is in fact Jurgel. Not an undead clergy member of Jurgel's church, but simply Jurgel's avatar. We know that it is a chapel to Jurgel because of the Jurgel flags and the fact that the plaque on the tomb says, Here lies the Guardian of Tombs, which was what Jurgel was known as in Nethril Empire of Magic. Not to mention that if you are a cleric and you speak to him at the camp, you can check his divine essence where the following happens. To that question, none are important. He has a divine aspect, yes. A reflection of death itself. Eternal and inescapable. If you're wondering who Jurgel is, then basically he was the god of death before he gave up his portfolio to Bane, Baal and Merkel, largely because he was bored of being a deity. He served Merkel for a time and then Siric, and now he serves Kelemvor, the new god of death. Kelemvor is the important part here. Let's rewind for a second and look at a detail that some of you might have forgotten about. At the start of the game, we are flung from the Nautiloid, and before we hit the ground, we are saved by something mysterious that levitates us just before we hit the ground. To me, this seems like divine intervention. Being saved in this exact moment would require a person of great power. I think this deity is Kalemvor. I'm going to refer to the talkative skeleton as Jurgle just to make things easier here. Jurgle says the following when we release him from his tomb. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? An arbiter of certain matters. But that is not important now. Wilt thou answer my question? So, this he is someone who converses with Jurgle, as he has told Jurgle to expect our character's arrival. Jurgle then refers to the he as an arbiter, which is synonymous with judge and someone who settles disputes. Kalemvor as Lord of Death is also known as the Judge of the Damned, as seen in Faiths and Pantheons 2002. Apart from these heavy hints, Kalemvor is literally Jurgle's current master in 5th edition, as we can see here in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. He is thought to record the passing of the living and to aid Kalemvor in seeing that souls are properly bound to their appropriate afterlife. Well, this is something that Jurgle has always been good at, keeping meticulous records of all the dead. It's why we can see that this statue of Jurgle has a long list, and why this book that we find early on in the chapel has lists of what appears to be hundreds of short obituaries with the names of their gods next to them. When we first speak to Jurgle in the camp, he has the following to say about why he is helping us. We meet again, as predicted. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. Be assured, it is not by choice. So, he doesn't want to be there. He has likely been commanded by Kalemvor to help the party. But why? Let's explore the ancient chapel further. This book is far lighter than it should be, with such a massive log. the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scrawl. You have a sense these are names, a list, but of what? Gods. These are the names of gods. Once lost, but now restored after the second sundering. 
Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn, silently recorded by this book. The Book of Dead Gods refers to the Second Sundering, where many gods that perished through the time of troubles have been restored to their various pantheons. When we actually read the book, the following is written. The names of dead gods, most of them unfamiliar and unpronounceable, fill the pages of this ancient tomb. Several entries on the last page have been stricken through. The final three, thoroughly enough to be completely illegible. I think that it is more than a coincidence that there are three names crossed out so thoroughly. I believe that this may refer to Bane, Baal and Merkel. And although Jurgle would be rather indifferent to the return of these three deities, after all he gave up his godhood to these three originally, after a simple game of knuckle bones, Kalemvor would not be happy about their return. It is for this reason that I think Kalemvor wants you to stick around so that you can help to defeat the Dead Three. I've seen people talking online about the Dead Three now only being demigods or that they are semi-confined to Faerun, but I don't believe this is true. The campaign Murder in Baldur's Gate makes it very clear that Baal has returned once the final Baal spawn died. I'll show you the following from the campaign. When either Vikang or Adrian dies, the survivor makes an involuntary, bone-cracking, flesh-tearing transformation as Baal's essence concentrates into one being. The victor morphs into the hulking, blood-soaked, corpse-like form of the Ballspawn Slayer. The silent onlookers stand transfixed as the Ballspawn momentarily exults over its foe's corpse before leaping into the crowd and rending skulls from torsos. Pandemonium and panic reign in the wide as the adventurers fight the Ballspawn Slayer. The Ballspawn Slayer fights to the death. After the fiend has fallen, the Watch swiftly sets out to restore order. The heroes can't know it at this point, but the Ballspawn Slayer's death resurrects Baal. The god's long slumber and the many years Adrian's good soul encased him has left the Lord of Murder weak. Thus, he cannot yet do more than subtly influence people who harbour murderous intentions. Baal swiftly fixates on the three antagonists and begins calculating ways to use them to whip the tendrils of fear drifting through the gate into a tempest. Already, some Baldurians, who remember Adrian's origin, are whispering the Lord of Murder's name. So, he's weak for sure, but he has returned as a god, as have Bane and Merkel. Bane reascended before the Second Sundering even occurred, and Merkel also returned as we can see here in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Interestingly, in the Forgotten Realms Campaign Guide 2008, we can see that Bane has brought Maglubuet under his control. Maglubuet is the god of the goblins and someone whom the goblins have deserted when the Absolute came around. Well, apart from this goblin here. Praise his ever bleeding axe. Praise his throne of flaming iron. Praise McGlubbyet. You know McGlubbyet, a tyrannical deity who treats his goblinoid followers as slaves. Trying to interrupt. Because I'm loyal to McGlubbyet. Because I ain't having my head turned by some upstart god. Yeah, my old tribe's falling for this shite, traitorous bastards. Now, we can obviously see a lot of Dead 3 symbolism in the Goblin camp, and I mentioned this in a video that I did a few days ago. If the Dead 3 are using the guise of the Absolute to increase their power base, then Goblins would be a good place to start, especially if Bane is already dominating Maglibuyet. So, why would Kalemvor be worried? Well, he does not like the Dead Three and he has had many run-ins with them, to the point where you could really say that Kalemvor is their total nemesis. As a mortal, Kalemvor was the one to return the Tablets of Fate that was stolen by the Dead Three to the Overgod Eo. Kalemvor was vastly opposed to the idea of undeath, which also juxtaposed Merkel's own position as a necromancer, and Kalemvor totally reshaped his domain upon the Fugue Plane ultimately destroying the Bone Castle, where at different times Jurgle, Merkel and Cyric had ruled from. Kalemvor changed it into the Crystal Spire, where its translucency represented that mortals should not view death as a frightening mystery. 
We can see all of this in the Troy Denning novel, Crucible, The Trial of Cyric the Mad. Kalimbor's forgiving nature and compassion towards mortals can be seen in the book called The Unclaimed, which we can also find in the Chapel de Jurgel. The book refers to a cleric of Shah not being collected by the goddess from the fugue plane. It says the following, Kalemvor pitied her as much as the Lord of the Dead is able, but could not intervene. This cleric of the Lady of Loss, unclaimed despite her worthiness, might yet have one more lesson to learn, that not of forgetting, but of being forgotten. The Dead Three are clearly up to no good, likely behind the rise of the Absolute, which in turn is potentially using the power of Shah, which Bane, Baal and Merkel might be controlling, and would then have access to the Shadow Weave. Kalemvor took what they view as their rightful place, he returned the Tablets of Fate as a mortal, and now Kalemvor's realm is under threat unless we do something about it. Remember that when Jurgle asks us what is the worth of a single mortal life, we can respond by saying, the only life that matters is mine. And Jurgle will respond with the following, At this particular junction, perhaps that is not so far from the truth. So, what on earth does Kalemvor want us to do? Well, that's for another video. Okay, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, then do please give me a like and subscribe. And if you want, you can check out the Discord and Patreon below. See you next time. Bye.